in this problem, we have one large charged particle surrounded by four smaller charged particles, and each of these smaller charged particles have the exact same magnitude. But, as you can see here, they all have different charges. And we need to find which has the greatest magnitude of force applied to these center larger charged particles. So I'll start with this one on the left, and I'll see that we have a negative and negative, and it's going to get repelled to the bottom right, and it's also going to get attracted to the bottom right by this smaller positive charge. It's also going to get repelled to the top right, and it's going to get attracted to the top right. So now we have four arrows drawn, and we have two arrows that go up and to the right. So let's, I'll draw that down here. It'll go up and to the right. And there are two of these that go up and to the right. And then we have two that go down and to the right. And this one's also down and to the right. So you can see that you have two of these that are pointing up and two of these that are pointing down. These are going to end up canceling out. But you have four that go to the right. So I'll just draw the arrow and I'll write a four. So now I'll move on to the next one. I can see that it's going to get both repelled in these corners. So I'll draw the arrows. And it's going to get attracted to the other corners. So I have one arrow that's going up and to the left. I have one arrow that's going up and to the right. I have one arrow that's going down and to the left. And lastly, I have one arrow that's going down and to the right. Well, you have two up arrows and two down arrows. Those are going to cancel. And you have um, you have one here that goes to the left. The other goes to the left. And then two that go to the right. So all of those are going to cancel. And you're not going to have any net force on the middle charged particle. Now let's look at the one all the way on the right here. It's going to be attracted to all three of these positive particles. And it's going to be repelled from this negative particle. So one of the arrows is going up and to the left. We have two of the arrows which are going down and to the left. And lastly we have one arrow that's going down and to the right. So you have three arrows that are pointing down and one arrow that's pointing up. So that's going to cancel with one of the down arrows. And you'll have two units of the force going down. But you also have three going to the left and one going to the right. So again, one of those will cancel and you'll get two units going to the left. So now that you find what this magnitude is here, I'll just call this x using the Pythagorean theorem. x is going to be equal to the square root, and it'll be 2. This will be f. And because of the way I split it up, the arrow was originally diagonal like this. So splitting it up like this and that, this angle here is 45 degrees. And since sine of 45 is the same thing as cosine of 45. It doesn't actually matter which one I write. So I'll just use sine for both of these. So it'll be 2f sine of 45. This will be squared. And it'll be plus 2f sine of 45, also squared. When you combine these, you'll get that x is equal to the square root of 8f squared sine squared of 40. Five, this simplifies to x is equal to 2f. Now, is 2f greater than this, as I explained, was 4f sine of 45? Well, how much is this worth? Well, it's actually 2.83f. So, this one is going to be greater. So, I can now arrange these correctly. This one's going to have the greatest magnitude. So, I'll move that here. This one is 0, so it's going to have the smallest magnitude. And this one here is going to be right in the middle. 
So that is your final answer. Thank you for watching.